Robert F. Kennedy Jr. recently captured public attention with a speech that scrutinized Vice President Kamala Harris's assertion of having been born into a middle-class family. In his remarks, he embarked on a reflective journey into the moral teachings he received during his childhood, underscoring the profound importance of personal integrity and accountability as pillars of American society. He vividly recounted an incident from his youth, wherein he accidentally broke a window while playing baseball. His father, in an effort to instill a sense of responsibility and honesty, referenced the legendary tale of George Washington and the cherry tree, a story well known to Americans of that era, which highlighted the virtue of owning up to one's mistakes. Through this narrative, Kennedy sought to illustrate a stark contrast between the values he was taught and the current state of the Democratic Party, suggesting that the party has veered away from its foundational principles of virtue and personal accountability. Kennedy's critique extended beyond mere anecdotes. He articulated a sharp criticism of what he perceived as a cultural loophole within the contemporary Democratic Party, encapsulated in the seemingly innocuous phrase, I was born in the middle class. He provocatively suggested that this mantra has become a convenient excuse for individuals to evade personal responsibility, allowing them to sidestep accountability in various aspects of life, from familial obligations to professional duties. In a humorous twist, he proposed that when faced with questions about tardiness at work or neglected chores at home, one could simply resort to invoking this phrase as a means of deflection. This rhetorical device, he argued, symbolizes a broader failure within the party to confront and address the economic challenges faced by everyday Americans under the current administration. Transitioning from personal anecdotes to economic analysis, Kennedy juxtaposed the economic landscape during Donald Trump's presidency with that of the Biden-Harris administration. He pointedly noted that key indicators of economic health, such as inflation, rent, and mortgage rates, have seen significant increases since President Biden took office, while wages have either stagnated or declined. By presenting these stark statistics, Kennedy aimed to paint a picture that underscores the current administration's failure to deliver positive economic outcomes, reinforcing his argument that Harris, as a prominent figure within this administration, would find it nearly impossible to provide a satisfactory or truthful answer to questions regarding economic performance. Kennedy's commentary also took a historical turn as he lamented what he sees as the transformation of the Democratic Party from its roots in promoting peace and civil rights to a party he believes is increasingly aligned with militaristic policies. He nostalgically recalled a time when the Democratic Party was represented by figures such as John F. Kennedy and Robert F. Kennedy, who stood for ideals that he holds dear. He expressed disappointment and disillusionment that the party, which once championed peace, now seems more inclined to support military engagement. He pointed to recent events, including President Zelensky's visit to the United States and the signing of military aid agreements, as indicative of a troubling shift in priorities. Kennedy argued that the focus on providing military support to Ukraine represents a misallocation of resources, suggesting that those funds would be better utilized addressing the pressing social and economic needs within the United States itself. He voiced a strong conviction that the narrative surrounding the Ukraine conflict has been misleading, framing it as a war that we were lied to from day one. Kennedy challenged the characterization of the Russian invasion as unprovoked, positing that decades of geopolitical tensions and explicit threats from Russian leaders were largely overlooked or ignored by American policymakers. He underscored the complexity of the situation, recalling historical instances in which Russia had faced invasions through Ukraine and drawing parallels with America's own military responses to perceived threats in its neighboring countries. In a notable pivot, Kennedy expressed admiration for Donald Trump's approach to diplomacy during his administration. He argued that Trump prioritized American interests and sought to negotiate rather than escalate conflicts, which he believes is a hallmark of effective leadership. He emphasized that Trump's desire to forge deals with other nations should not be misconstrued as isolationism. Rather, it was a strategic approach aimed at fostering international cooperation that benefits all parties involved. This contrast, he suggested, is emblematic of a current administration that has lost sight of the needs and interests of American citizens. Expanding on his critique, Kennedy articulated concerns about the Democratic Party's apparent abandonment of fundamental constitutional rights, particularly the crucial right to freedom of speech. He recalled the lessons imparted during his upbringing, which emphasized the dangers of government censorship and its potential to undermine the very foundations of democracy. Kennedy argued that the Democratic Party, which once defended these rights, has now adopted a stance that endorses censorship under the guise of protecting truth. He framed this shift as hypocritical, noting that figures in the party have historically championed the notion that the First Amendment protects all forms of speech, even those that may be considered false or unpopular. Kennedy asserted that the government's role in managing information during the COVID-19 pandemic serves as a poignant example of how disinformation can emerge from authoritative sources. He pointed to specific instances in which prominent Democratic leaders promoted narratives he deemed misleading, framing their calls for censorship as a betrayal of the Democratic principles they once espoused. He contended that the First Amendment's protections extend to all speech, regardless of its veracity, and that the remedy for harmful speech lies in more speech, not in censorship. Throughout his remarks, Kennedy conveyed a palpable sense of yearning for a return to the original values of the Democratic Party, values that he feels have been compromised in today's political discourse. He passionately called for a renewed commitment to free speech and civil liberties, advocating for an end to what he described as the encroaching surveillance state. 
Kennedy positioned himself as a steadfast advocate for democracy, asserting that he seeks to restore the principles that once defined the party of his youth, principles he believes are essential for a thriving democratic society. In summation, Kennedy's speech provided a multifaceted critique of contemporary political dynamics, blending personal anecdotes with broader historical reflections. His commentary on economic policy, military engagement, and civil liberties was intricately woven into a narrative of disillusionment with the current Democratic Party and a fervent call for a revival of foundational American values. He articulated a vision for a more accountable, transparent, and principled political landscape, one that he believes is essential for the future of democracy in the United States.